Hey guys, welcome back to JD Mods. Today we are back working on the RX-7 and today we are going to be installing the interior. So what I've done since the last video is just installed the interior wiring harnesses that go like under the carpets, behind the dashboards. Uh, I got the engine bay harness on as well. Uh, just lots of little harnesses, some speakers, seat belts, just little things that go like behind the interior trim panels. So now I believe we are ready to install the interior trim components. Before we get into it, I'll show you guys uh, what I've done quickly. You can see here, first and foremost, I quickly just tossed on some carbon fiber headlight covers. Really just get some hype and see how they're gonna look. I'm quite excited uh, for the final product. I think they look really good. Eventually I'm gonna get a carbon fiber hood to tie it all together. Uh, they might look a little lost until then, but uh, that is the plan long term. You can see the engine bay accessories, I believe those are all in the last video as well. Then inside the car here, um, got both the front and rear seat belts on, got the main horseshoe harness, uh, the dash harness is all on. I've got two of the three pedals in, I still gotta paint the brake uh, booster before I install that. I've uh, got the main fuse box in, and then if we walk around to the back, you can see I've got all the wiring harnesses done up here got the fuel tank kind of cap there um, gas and hood release or gas and hatch release sorry but yeah you can see we are ready to install all of the interior pieces let me show you guys the huge collection of interior pieces i have starting with these really cool mats um, these are some oem mats i don't know if they're any special edition or just the normal rx7 mats to be honest but they have this kind of um, brass colored aluminum RX-7 plate um, on the mats and this kind of cool finish. I don't know if those are special special at all but I kind of like them. Uh, I've got this trim piece, lots of this stuff I'm going to be repainting. Um, it's kind of annoying because you have to strip off this gooey textured finish that they put on from factory before painting it but I'm going to be painting this all up with some SEM SEM trim paint. It's going to look really good. But yeah, basically over here we have all of our interior pieces, some seals, covers, there's the HVAC panel, everything you can imagine. Uh, there's our HVAC system, which is going to be something I tackle in this video as well. I have to clean it all up. You can see it's real nasty uh, where the air inlet came. And I think in the blower motor box, which I believe is this one, there's a little mouse nest. Here we have the cluster. Don't know if it's going to be this video, but I have to rebuild this cluster. All the RX-7 guys all know that the resistors and capacitors wear out and you have to replace them. Um, and then over here, got two options for some center consoles. Got to pick the better of the two. And a couple headlights. I have to refurbish those in another video as well. Um, got my B-pillar trims with the homemade rear speaker covers that I've 3D printed and I'm selling on eBay as well. I might link those in the description if anyone's interested. Got the headliner up there. And what we're gonna be starting with on is the carpet. So here's the carpet. You can tell it is quite nasty. This car has been sitting for 10 years and of course is almost 30, nope, it is 30 years old. So we are gonna go ahead and start by cleaning this up before throwing it in the car. I'm not sure how much you can tell on camera, but the carpet turned out very nice. Let's go and toss it in the car. Let me show you guys the carpet. It, it looks very nice. It uh, came out really well. Uh, very black, especially on the yellow paint. And I also quickly just threw in the, those RX-7 floor mats with those really cool metal logos. And I'm really happy with how it's turning out. Uh, next up, before we install the dash, I'm gonna go ahead and install the AC heater and blower motor components. Here are those components here on the ground. I've made myself a little workspace. Uh, as you can see, they're super nasty. Uh, like here's the intake portion. Um, I don't know why it looks like that, but it does. 
Um, the AC rad looking thing, I forget what it's called, sorry, is also super nasty and I'm sure uh, the heater module, which this is here, isn't great either. So I'm gonna go ahead and crack all of these open. Most of them have like little metal clips you can undo to t take them apart and a few screws here and there. Uh, this one I definitely have to take apart because something was clearly making a nest in this portion in here. You can vacuum it out all you want, but I bet you when you turn on your heat or AC, not that this car will have AC, but I think it all passes through all three modules anyway, I bet you it would stink. So to remedy that, I have a few things. I have of course my shop vac with a very small little nozzle to get into tight spaces. And I also have a Bissell steam cleaner. So I'm really excited to give these items a try on the HVAC units before I toss them on my car. I cracked open the AC portion first and you can see, first of all, the end tank area. It's just super dusty, has some debris in the corner there. The rad portion itself is just absolutely disgusting. Try and focus on some of that for you. And uh, yeah, the other end is just as bad as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum it, steam clean it, uh, put it back together and do that with all three units. Should be much, much better. I've made some progress. After cleaning up the HVAC panels, I put them in um, just against the firewall there, which allowed me to just quickly toss in the dash. It's surprisingly simple when you're just installing a bare dash, especially with no windshield in. It just kind of went right in. Then I installed these brand new uh, like grill vents. These are still available new from Mazda, pretty cheap, like a hundred bucks for the pair. Uh, something like that, I think I got them on sale. I still have to install the little cap in the center but uh, yeah, there's the dash in there. And then actually what I did was just quickly installed the steering column with steering wheel and the gauge cluster so that I could actually test if the gauge cluster was working. And kind of like all these cars, it's not. I have to rebuild that gauge cluster, um, but that's a separate video altogether. I got a few other parts to install over there, but what we're actually gonna be doing now is working on refinishing all of these gauge cluster pieces. All right, so these pieces, if you've owned or know of someone with an RX-7, always get super nasty. Let me zoom in and show you guys. They just always look gross and scratched up. And th the reason why is because they have this like gummy surface, surface finish from factory. Uh, you can kind of like feel it with your fingernail. It's like this like kind of rubberized texture. Uh, this panel here, these always break on them. They're how they connect to the dash. So I had to epoxy that one together. And then on the top, I just did a skim layer of like plastic Bondo. So I got to sand that down as well. This one back in the day had like a gauge cluster mounted on the bottom of it or like a boost controller, uh, which took off some paint or left something. I can't really tell. Uh, so I got to fix that up. So this is basically all the stuff from the center console going all the way up to the gauges. Um, so what I'm gonna be doing is using some Goo Gone, um, some whatever you call this, Scotch-Brite, a little microfiber, and then washing all with soap and water. So that's step one, get the surface finish off, and then we're gonna be painting this all with uh, satin trim paint. Well, on camera that was instantaneous, but in real life that was very painful. Let me show you guys some of the parts. Not quite sure how well you're going to be able to tell, but they are perfectly smooth. No more rubberized texture finish. Uh, these are all the parts I'm doing right now. And the most painful part was probably this hood piece. It actually cracked. So not only was there a chip that I had to repair, but it cracked exactly where you see there um, in two perfect pieces. So what I did is I epoxied the underside and then skim layer plastic bondoed the top. I'm very excited to see how that turns out. Um, I can put a picture up on the screen of it broken in half, but there's all the pieces we're going to be painting and we're going to be painting them with this paint over here. Um, I have a little bit of 
primer for the hood with the Bondo on it, but then everything is getting painted SEM or SEM Trim Block Ultra uh, Satin. There's a the number right there, 49143. I've been told this is pretty good paint, so I'm really excited to give it a go. Uh, let me set up a little tripod and show you guys the painting process. Painted parts turned out very nice. Here you can see the center console. Of course the ashtray and stuff uh, buttons are a little bit different color, but it doesn't bother me too much. I can fix it later if I really wanted to. The hood is assembled, it's face down right now. I can show it when it's installed. And then of course there is the clamshells. I'll show what I'm working on next over here. Uh, side note though, just went to the hardware store today and picked up all this half inch Schedule 40 PVC tube and that is actually for a makeshift paint booth. I'm going to be covering that in a future video um, So that when I paint the accessories my whole garage doesn't get covered in overspray So anyway, let's go over here. I'll show you guys what I'm working on now So here is the uh, radio trim piece I just painted and of course I took out all the electronics to paint it now there are all the buttons and controls like you can see the Temperature gauge thing. It's all dusty. I'm sorry it's not focusing properly. All the knobs are real nasty. Um, so I got a bucket of soapy water out here. I'm going to be cleaning those up, installing it in the trim, and then it's ready to go back in the car. And on the other workbench, we got a lot going on right now. Um, off camera, it's been a long time since the last clip. And one of the reasons for that is because before I can install all any of this trim, I have to install the e-brake. As you can see, it is super nasty. The boot isn't too bad. I got a new one anyway. But I can rock that factory boot for now, but the handle is absolutely atrocious. You can see there, it's absolutely garbage. So, from Redline Goods, I actually got a new handle leather. So I'm super excited about this. Uh, to install it, you just use a little bit of contact cement. Um, there's a few tricks that they show on their website, so I'm going to start actually by trying to install that e-brake handle. I just reread the Redline's Good instruction manual, and the good news for this one is that it is already stitched together. It's more of like a sleeve we're going to put over top, so it should be super simple. Again, I'm going to be using this contact cement. This one like dries clear and has a brush, so it should work perfect for what we're doing. Uh, first, I'm going to go ahead and take off the shift boot. While this is off, I'm going to give it a bath, I think, and my hot soapy water and maybe recondition it a little bit. It turns out there's a little wire at the base of it here that I'm going to try and take off. Let me show you guys that. You can see the little wire there. Sorry if this is hard to see, but basically there's a little metal twist tie almost is probably the best way to describe it. So I got some needle nose pliers, untwist that, take it off. There it is there, just a little wire. And now, zoom out. We should be able to finish taking off this e-brake boot, I hope. <laughs> I figured it out, there's actually a little bit of glue once you take off that twist tie piece right at the base of the handle. Kind of work your way around that, pulling outwards, and then slips right off. So now this is what we're gonna be replacing, this sleeve portion right here. Uh, on the Redline website, it recommends, uh, this is the way I'm going to do it, using an X-Acto knife to cut along the stitching right on the back of the handle there. So I'm going to do that and then I should be able to peel off the handle. So now with the old e-brake cover off, I can install the new one. The only unfortunate thing I learned is that this actually is supposed to just slide over the original one, but as you remember, my original one's all broken up. So if you were to slide it over as is, it would not look even 
I tried it, it looks quite bad. So unfortunately, this is a little big. Uh, when you slide it on, it's a little loose. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is glue it on anyway and see if I can just like make it look all right. If not, I might have to trim it up and just get a little custom with it. So I'm gonna do that and I also washed the boot and I can put that on as well and then we'll see how it looks all finished up. So to reinstall the shift boot, I put it on inside out and I used a zip tie because the old wire didn't work anymore. And now I think, hopefully I have this on the right way, I can just turn it right side out. And boom, it is installed. Let me show you how it looks. So there's the after. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. If it went over as it was designed, I'm sure it would be perfect, but essentially, since I had to cut my old piece off, I ended up seaming the underside by basically just cutting it as close as I could together, uh, not overlapping it or else it would be a seam, and then just gluing it down. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how it turns out. Of course, that side's down. You'll almost never see it. Compared to before, it is much, much nicer. And for the price, I really can't complain. And it looks a lot better with the cleanup shift boot too. So let's go ahead and toss it on the car. Interior is starting to look very good. Give you guys a little preview. It's kind of hard to look past that awful steering wheel. But if we do, we can see this very clean interior with the brand new shift boot on there. Um, new e-brake handle, e-brake boot in decent condition. We got all my painted trim that looks much better than before. Cleaned up gauge cluster, painted hood. And I actually did some bonus assembly back here got some more parts on the sides um, i'm waiting to put down the carpet here till all my seats are in but of course that can't happen it's kind of a uh, laundry list of things to do before i can put in those side trim pieces i gotta put the hatch on because it's just the order that stuff goes on i just have to paint those pieces still but that's a different video i'm going to finish off this video with a radio install uh, and actually i got really lucky that my car came with these adapter harnesses here that already had your kind of standard aftermarket wire colors like your purple, green, white, and gray, plus your powers and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and simply unplug these connectors, then splice them into my aftermarket ones that came with my cheap Amazon radio. Um, I prefer to spend my money in some other places, so I'm just gonna to toss this $30 head unit in for now and see how it looks and sounds and whatnot. So let's go ahead and get this wired up and I'll show you guys installing it in the car. So rather than cutting all these off, getting out my soldering gun and soldering them together, which would work fine, I've actually decided to keep all these quick connectors that came pre-crimped on. It looks like they were done quite nicely and they have this pretty good insulation on them. Um, and also if I ever decide to change out this cheap radio for a better one, I might actually be uh, enjoy just being able to unplug them and plug new stuff in. So I have these uh, butt connectors, the male and female ones in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect them on the ends, plug in the appropriate colors, and then we can go try it out. Probably the easiest radio install I've ever done. Let's see how long this takes. Now it's time to toss it in the car. New radio is installed. I'm 
fine with how it looks. It's kind of this like knockoff carbon fiber, but at least it's all black and I can change the LED color to match the interior. But as you can see, I've done some pretty good assembly and I think I'm gonna end the video off here. Well, thank you for watching this video. I know it's been a little bit all over the place. This was actually a span out over a long period of time. It's very tedious stuff, this portion of the build, the interior cleaning, installing little parts here and there. But I'm really happy with how the chassis is coming together. Uh, this part of it's actually pretty much done for now. I'm gonna go ahead in the next video and build my paint booth out of this uh, PVC here. That'll be an interesting video in itself, but I'm gonna build a big old paint booth right here so I can paint the hatch, doors, um, bumpers and hood, as well as the mirrors and some other little accessories like that, like the vents. And that means that all the painting will be done so I can really start going crazy with the assembly because once the hatch is on, I can finish the headliner. Um, I'm probably gonna make a windshield video all by itself. I'm pretty excited to install my first windshield um, all properly and everything. And then of course we're going to get to the meat and potatoes on the rotary rebuild. I'm excited for all that. So thanks for sticking with me through the boring parts of the project. But if I don't show this part, basically what happens is it goes from that blue shell you saw in the beginning of the series to this uh, in a blink of an eye. It doesn't really make much sense. So that's why I have to make this kind of video. But anyway, thanks for watching. Please let me know what you guys think of the build, what you want to see, what you don't really care to see, whatever. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe.